it is officially Halloween, the final day of October. But if you're like me, then spooky season never ends. It's year round. But today does mark the end of our look at the Halloween franchise. We're wrapping things up and taking one final look at my favorite movie, my favorite franchise, and my favorite character. So thank you for joining me for The Shape of Fear. Purely and simply evil. Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. I've spent this whole month talking about how Halloween is basically my favorite thing in the world. We've ranked the franchise, ranked the masks, ranked the timelines, ranked my top 10 favorite kills in the franchise, reviewed Halloween 3, and even talked about some little known facts about the franchise. And it's been a lot of fun, and I hope that you've enjoyed it as well. If you haven't had a chance to catch up on all of those other videos, there's a whole playlist for The Shape of Fear, and I'll be linking that in the description of this video. But before we really get going here, let me know in the comments what your go-to movie is in this franchise. Which one do you tend to reach for the most when you're in a Halloween mood? So grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring. I've stated before that some of my earliest experiences with horror have to do with Halloween and the entire franchise. I don't know that it was necessarily the first horror movie that I watched. I think The Blair Witch Project probably takes that. But Halloween definitely was probably that second one if it wasn't the first. And the way that it really came to be for me was the fact that me and my sister used to spend a lot of time going to video stores when I would see her. You know, we would pick different movies and Halloween happened to be one of the movies that we picked. And I can still remember that feeling that I got. Um, specifically, that scene where Lori is backing up against the doorway and you see Michael's mask come out of the shadows. That, to me, was what really hooked me into the franchise. And from there, it was nonstop. I loved everything about it. It absolutely shaped my love of horror as a whole. And I even spent most of my Halloweens marathoning all of the movies. It was it was usually the Thorn trilogy, that timeline of films, because that was just what the TV channels played back then more often than the other ones. But I remember Michael being the only slasher villain that ever gave me nightmares. He's the only one that's ever done that, and it still hasn't happened with anybody else to this day. I mean, I don't really get scared by things. I I, I mean, you can say that I'm desensitized to it, whatever. Um, you could say that I started watching these movies too young, and that's probably true, but, you know, I turned out okay, at least I think I did. So I don't really, I don't really worry about that. But it absolutely shaped who I am as a person, and the things that interest me, and the types of horror movies that I'm into now, because slashers to this day are my favorite horror movies. It's my favorite subgenre. And I don't see that ever changing, and that's fine. You know, if you like other types of horror movies, other subgenres, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I, I'm, I'm happy for you, you know, but slashers have always been that comfort for me. I find solace in being able to sit down, not really have to worry about, you know, having to think think too deeply about a movie. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy movies that you have to think about, but slasher movies, they they truly do comfort me. They're, they're comforting to me to watch. I can turn them on and I can just see who can come up with the most inventive ways of killing unsuspecting teens. That sounds very morbid, but it's just the truth. It's how I feel. Something else that I also remember growing up watching the Halloween franchise is that first time that I saw Halloween 3. Like I said, me and my sister would go to the video store, um, usually like Blockbuster or something like that, and we would rent these movies. When we got to Halloween 3, we rented it expecting to see Michael Myers, like a lot of people did. And we watched it, and there's no Michael Myers to be found in that movie. And we hated it. We hated it, we hated it with a passion. We never wanted to see it again. Luckily, I've come around to it. I understand what they were going for, and I absolutely adore that movie now. It is one of the better entries in the entire franchise, and I'm not at all opposed to returning to an anthology of sorts within that Halloween, um, within that Halloween IP. 
Now, the thing about my sister is now she doesn't like movies. She doesn't like horror movies. And if you asked her, she would probably say that she doesn't even remember watching these when we were younger, but we absolutely did. And it, and it's a big part of why I love horror movies today. And I will never forget that. It's something that I look back on fondly. And I think that's a huge part of the reason why Halloween became my favorite franchise and my favorite, um, the original became my favorite movie of all time. There's a lot of nostalgia behind it and I'm okay with that. Nostalgia is a great thing. It, it gives us these good feelings inside and I don't see a problem with that. But the franchise is messy as hell. There is no way around that. It's a messy franchise with a ton of different timelines. We even ranked some of them um, in a previous video, but not all of them because you can absolutely kind of chop it up and make your own headcanon timelines. And again, there's nothing wrong with doing that. One of my favorite timelines in my own headcanon is Halloween, Halloween 2, and then H2O and just end it there. I think that is probably the most perfect way to watch the, the entire franchise. And I thought about including that in that video, but I left it off because... Because when I typically watch these movies, I feel like this impulsive need to continue on. So I will end up watching Resurrection 2, which I've stated that I get a lot of stupid fun out of. It's a so bad it's good kind of movie, and I'm okay with that as well. So I typically end up watching Resurrection as well, and that's why that I didn't include that timeline in that particular video. But even beyond the timelines, there's a whole lot of other messy aspects to the franchise. Halloween 4 makes no mention of any cults or thorns or cult of thorns or anything like that. It is a back to basics, let's try to get as close as we can to that original film and go from there type of movie. And I think that they succeeded pretty well with that. I mean, okay, the mask is not the greatest and there was the whole, you know, pink mask, blonde hair, which we've talked about this month as well. So there's that, those types of issues there. You know, I understand if you don't like the movie for things like that, I get it, but I do think that it is a pretty good representation of what the intention was, if that makes sense. Their, their intentions were to kind of take things back a few steps and just try to recreate some of that magic from the original film. And I think that they did a decent job with that. It's not perfect. It is not nearly as good as that original film. But again, it's okay. You know, they had new people working on it, new creative teams, but you didn't have that cult of thorn, those seeds really planted in Halloween 4. And then Halloween 5 comes along and Dominique Othan and Gerard and all of his choices they decide to throw in a tattoo on Michael's wrist that they had no damn clue what they were going to do with. And then they included the man in black, didn't have a damn clue what they were going to do with him, and said, screw it, we'll leave it for the next person to come in and figure out what that means. So that's where that began. And then Halloween 6 is just, it's a decent movie with a lot of ideas that kind of had to be included because of what they did in Halloween 5, and it's, it's just confusing. There's a lot of stuff happening, and there are two very different cuts of the movie. It's just a mess. Like, it really is just a mess. I'm not trying to put Halloween 6 down. I'm, I'm putting Halloween 5 down, because you know how I feel about that. And if you don't, go check out my ranking video or any other video in this series, because I can't seem to get away from it. But it's a mess. There, there is no denying that. There was a lot happening. And then you get to H2O, there's the, you know, the retconning, getting rid of what happened in 4, 5, 6, which I understand. And you bring back um, Jamie Lee Curtis and bring Lori back. And I understand that, and I love H2O. I love it, but again, that movie is a bit of a mess. There's a lot of crap going on with the masks, and it's distracting in some ways because of that. You know, and there are a lot of other gripes that you could bring up. So... Any which way you look at this franchise, it really is a mess. I mean, even dating back as far as the original Halloween 2, that was a mess because John Carpenter did not want to do it. Deborah Hill did not want to do it. They did not have any interest in continuing the Halloween franchise 
which is understandable. They're, they're artists, they're creative and they want to create new things. They don't want to keep rehashing that same story and they didn't feel like there was any meat left on the bone to talk about. So when they were kind of forced into doing it, well, John Carpenter just churned out a script in about two days on a couple cases of beer. So it's, it's always been a mess and it's always been tricky to try to navigate, to try to put together the best movies to fit within all of this different lore and, and all these decisions made from producers and things like that. So I absolutely understand why it's a mess, but it doesn't really deter me from loving the franchise. And I don't think that there's an issue with that. Again, if you don't like the franchise because of that, completely understand, but I still love the franchise. Now, where are we going next with the Halloween franchise? Obviously, Halloween Ends was the absolute most finality we've ever had with the character of Michael Myers. He got thrown into a dang, um, whatever that's called, a compactor or whatever that is, and ripped to shreds. I mean, that he's absolutely 100% dead in that timeline. So what are we doing now? Well, they're going to turn it into a TV series. They're going back to the original. They're calling it a creative reset. And essentially the way that they worded a lot of it was that they wanted to create some sort of cinematic universe between the TV series and subsequent movies. I don't know how to feel about that yet because we don't have any information on what exactly that means. And we're, we're probably not going to get any information on that for quite a while yet. So I really don't know how to feel. I'm not sure how I feel about it being a TV series. I don't know. There's just not enough information to really, to really say anything other than it's turning into a TV series. But that's not all we're doing. There's actually some video games, and one of them's already actually been released. It's, um, it's Retro Realms. It's an old school kind of uh, game where you play as Michael Myers and you go through the different levels and it looks really fun. I've watched some gameplay of it. I think it would actually be really fun to play. So I consider checking that out. But there is also another video game that is currently in development. It's being made with Un Unreal Engine 5, which means it's going to look freaking amazing when it comes out. And even better than that, John Carpenter is assisting on the development of the game. In what capacity, I don't know, but I have read that he's planning on being pretty intimate with the development of the game. So I, ho I hope he is, because I want to see what he can come up with for a video game. He's an avid gamer, and he absolutely loves video games. So I think it would be really cool to see what he and that development team can come up with. What I'm hoping for is something along the lines of Alien Isolation. I absolutely love that game. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was really scary. And I would love to see them do something similar to that with Halloween. I think it would work very well. So that's where we're headed in the future with the Halloween franchise. I think there's some cool stuff coming up that I'm excited for. But overall, I just love Michael Myers. I love Halloween. It is the first movie that ever truly terrified me. And that is what The Shape of Fear is to me. So there you have it. That is the end of The Shape of Fear. And again, I've enjoyed this so much. Thank you to everyone who has taken time out of their day to check out this series. It still blows my mind that there are people actually interested in what I have to say. It, it truly means a lot to me. And so again, thank you. Thank you very much. So let me know down in the comments what the Halloween franchise means to you. If you are interested in Redcon 1 products, I have a discount code that you can use to save 20% off of your entire order, so be sure to check that out. And you can also find all of my merchandise available at ProWrestlingTees.com slash AndrewDreamer or even right under this video. And I've also been reworking that WWH Patreon page and updating some things and perks over there. So check that out. Consider joining us there, or you can become a member right here on YouTube. All of the links are in the description below. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the heart-pounding action here at WWH. Now that we've finished up with The Shape of Fear, you can catch up on anything that you missed. All you have to do is click on the playlist that's appearing on your screen right now. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there are no countouts for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling with Horror.